You can see all over here is an area they call Guy's Cliff, which is a big house that's gone into disrepair. And the fishery's been taken over in the last, wait for this, three months. It is a jungle, it is five foot stinging nettles, I'm telling you, seriously overgrown. The work these guys have done just to open up the first six or eight swims is absolutely amazing. Beautiful bit of water, and the two guys that run this, it's like a mini syndicate if you like, Alex and Ollie are both running this, and I mean, it's a beautiful looking spot. I'm going to bivy up as it were, just over here. I've actually put the brolly up, not because it's gonna rain, but because it's so hot, it's unbelievably hot. It's just screaming pike. Um, lots of small fish, they say. Um, they even got rough here, which I haven't caught for a long time. Dace, chub, perch, roach. Pike, they reckon, pretty good fish in here. Even sander, bream, it's sort of a last piece of a nice piece of an English traditional river that's being renovated and brought back, hopefully to its former glory when it was years ago. Of course, you can't put more water in, can you? So if water flows are low anywhere in the world, we've got problems with less water. But here, at least the guys are getting in, trying to manage it, trying to bring it back so anglers can get in there and try some natural fishing. River fishing is not easy, as a lot of you river fishermen know. Whole different ball game, but if you go about it right, you're in some lovely surroundings, you should get a few fish. The swims they've cut out, I'm just going to show you now roughly what these guys have achieved in three months. You see all this ground here? Beautiful countryside over there, Warwickshire countryside over there. If I hold the camera up, you'll get some idea of the height of the nettles. They had to chop pathways out through here. And the old, they call it Himalayan balsam. Don't touch it, don't touch it, Graham. I've touched it. Oh no, I'll get a clipboard notification. I'll get pinged. They've had to chop through to make swims like this, which is big enough, wait for this, to take a bivy. And you can night fish all night. Of course I've night fished on some rivers, but not all night. I don't think I've ever fished all night on a river. So this is a new one for me. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm fancying this with this. Guy's Cliff is here. I'm going to show you back up here. I'll go and film it in a minute. It's a really, really big historic building. It's very, very old. Gone into disre disrepair. In fact, dereliction, I think, is a word. So, first off, I'm going to be using my match rod. Might have to go a bit light just to get a few, uh, a few bites. Probably some maggots, some bread. It's slower down here. There is a weir up by the Saxon Mill restaurant, which has got a lot of oxygen in it there. But look, they've cut all this out amazing amount of work <laughs> and unfortunately for them a lot more amazing work to do but boy is it hot look at this 
Look at that dark. I'm fancying over just by that wall. They do get barbel here as well, but they're very, very rare, I understand. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get some bait in first. I'm gonna be tipping a bit of this uh, sweet marine bait in there. But I don't, I'm not struck on using it on its own, but I don't mind putting it in with uh, the actual ground bait. I've only got half a bag there. And then I'll mix it all in. The bottom half is, yes, Bailey's number one horse feed and bran. I probably have put too much Bailey's in there, to be honest, because I thought the river would be really faster flowing, so it's quite slow, so I won't be going mad feeding it heavily. Let's get all this soaked up first. Well, I'm going to be using a match rod. I was going to go piking straight away, guys, but I think the best thing I can do is to start just see if I can catch any fish to start with. Because I've seen some small stuff topping. I've got like a size 20 hook. I've already tried to uh, get the float with the right shot on it and actually caught a minnow first cast on a bare hook. I hadn't even put any bait on. Because I've caught a minnow, I'm going to go for double maggots there. I'm guessing that it's pretty deep over that side there. try it about four feet I guess now I've chucked some bait down there purely because I can see what's coming over it and if you know they say there's some good perch in here so I'm just going to run that float through there I've got brand new got line here people but because you appreciate no expense spared and just see if there's any roach or dace. Now they don't mind you, you know, using a, a single dead bait here. Hey, I had a bite then, that's probably, probably minnows. So I'll put double maggots on just to try and get rid of them. But I'm sort of fancying over by that wall, but I don't know how tight, because when you look at the trees up here, a lot of stuff's got to have fallen in there. So it's probably pretty snaggy on the bottom. I think that was two bites. I haven't plumbed it as yet. Put some maggots in with the ground bait. Just go for a little pinch. It goes out. It's a lot slower than I envisaged. And I've got the sun in my face at the moment. Just see if we can get a small fish. I feel the minnow actually drew the float away and felt the minnow. Might be a small day, small chub, bumping it. If you look at the leaves over the back, they're going faster, so the main flow is indeed by that wall. Well, I've already bumped a couple of small, small fish off, and I want to try and get at least one to use as a dead bait, because it looks so pike fishing oriented here, that pace. I'd be very surprised that they don't take a twitch dead bait. I am getting bites, but I feel some are minnows, but I need I knew, you know, I barely need a dead bait. About the size of that float, about the same length as that float. I don't like using big baits. There we go. It came off. So much for barbless hooks. It's a very small hook, a 20. Could get them with a swim feeder, I guess, but it does indeed seem ideal. Uh, ideal pace for using a float. I'm getting biting, I'm not connecting people. What's going on? I'm bumping everything. I even let the float go a bit longer. Right, I've got small fish this time. I'm calling this as a, where's my umbrella going? As a roach, and that is ideal size for a bait, little roach like that. Ideal pike bait, sander bait. Bit big for perch. Well, I'm off the mark at the Amazon jungle fishery. Well, getting plenty of these. One small tiny weeny chub and roach like this. To be honest, they're just screaming pike, aren't they, that size? Well, I've pretty well a roach a chuck down there. Well, thank goodness the uh, 
The sun's gone behind the cloud. I, I never thought I'd say that, but it's unbelievable. I came up in the car and it registered 31 again, fourth day on the trot. I'm going to try and catch a small roach. I'm going to knock it on the head and I'm going to fish it on a single hook, barbless, and twitch it around here and see if there are any pike in here. First, catch the bait. So all I've got is a 20, which is very, very soft wire. 20. I don't want minnows, so I'm going for double maggots, and of course they will also take double maggots, no question of that. I just want one about four inches long. As I say, I'm not a, not a lover of big baits. I like small baits, and I can tweak them and twitch them around. And I'll show you how I'm going to hold it on, because... There we go, there's one there. Now if you do this long enough during the day, you get to catch a lot of fish. In fact, I might not even use this one, I think this is too big. That's a nice roach. Yeah, that is a nice one, I'm not gonna use that. See, I, now, people would easily, easily use that pipe fish. I don't like that, I've, I've, I don't really, I never have done, to be honest. So he can go back. I just like small ones. Waste of a good fish, get a nice, Small one, I can tweak and twitch it around with other one. You watch me, I now I won't catch anything but that size roach, which is no hardship. Fantastic setting. Oh, I looked up there and the float went. <clears throat> I will go up there and film that for you, it's quite impressive. What I have noticed is you get a little pinch like this. Out it goes. I have noticed that as soon as I start coming, in more than three quarters I don't get the better fish that size another tip if the float just dips and pops up generally generally it's a minnow you just want to pull when you get pestered by minnow just leave it a little bit long before you strike <laughs> it'll probably still be a minnow you watch I'm going to wish I hadn't thrown that roach back now if I did start getting better fish, I would uh, up that hook wire, the actual diameter of the wire. It's a very, very fine wire hook. So it keeps the maggots alive better. It doesn't damage them quite so much. So they, they wriggle about on the hook more because they're just nicked. But the hook can spring open. Oh, there's a fish on there. I didn't know that. Looks like a minnow. No, a small chub cake. Now, just going to show you on a size 20 fine wire hook there, those maggots are going absolutely crazy. Just a little tip, if you are into catching lots of small ones, you might want to go down to what they call a, fire, a fine wire or indeed a blued hook. You run the risk, if you do hit a bigger fish, of it springing open. Sometimes they straighten and they stay open. Another time they'll spring open and you bump four or five fish off and wonder why the hook still springs back to that same position. So that's because it's too springy. There we go, that feels like a roach. Yeah, that is pipe bait size. Was. <laughs> Come on, in you go. It'll give you, give you freedom. I did chuck a bit of bait just down in here. Just going to see if there is a fish down there. I'm sure there's minnows. Float will sometimes rise in the water, which also tells you there's fish down there. No, oh, there you go. As soon as you go to a uh, single maggot minnows, which are fine if I was perch fishing, but I'm not. This might be bait size. That's three maggots. There we go, let's take them away from the water's edge. I've got here the trusty old 2.40 meter Kanji casting weight, 40 to 80 grams, which means nothing to me, obviously. Loads of fish on it, sea fish, everything, really good rod. But because I'm on a, a barbless hook here, I go through both lips and I get a tiny snip of rubber band and put on the other side and I'll show you. 
So guys, if that makes sense, just there. A little bit of rubber band over that, that'll stop me losing that bait all the time. And I've got the shock right close to it. Just gonna test how it sinks. How fast. One, two, three, about three or four. Sink into the depth. So I'm gonna go around here and work my way upstream because that food has been going down there. So I think if a pike had been activated by any fish, they're gonna be up down that wall there. So, all that brickwork there is part of Guy's Cliff House. How they built that right on the edge of the river is beyond me, but it's gone into a, a derelict state now, but I mean it's absolutely on the river. Just throw that out there and see what happens. Almost as deeper than it looks, it probably do possibly two swan shot, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be snaggy because you know all the trees here, the branches would have gone in, and also a lot of the walling would have gone, I guess. It'd be so fun to see a fish flash up behind that. No, nothing that time. And the next car is going to go down. I can see underneath there's a massive, great big block there. I've gone all quiet. It's what pike fishing does to you when you're twitching a bait. It's not like sitting watching a float or a buzzer. As you can get the take at any instant. Sort of electrifying goes right down the right down through the rod that snatch and of course maybe tomorrow i get to go upstream which is real real jungle fishing apparently and i'm going to work my way down here and what i say there's a pike this big there i'm going to make a cast of the length of what I imaginary fish would be like under there Graham, that was an unbelievable cast. That went through Guy Cliff's window. Yeah, I imagine a fish laying there, so I do a cast, a cast, a cast, the length of the fish. A bit like salmon fishermen do. What they do is they make a cast and they go one pace down like this. They just, you know, move half a yard or a yard down. The water is very clear here. I'd be amazed if a pike doesn't see that. Got to pick up, I think, guys. Very close to going in the water here. All I can do is don't think it's a big fish. Oh, he spat the bait. Lost the bait just behind there. Wanted a big fish, looked about three pounds. Oh well, at least I know there's pike in here. So you can see what these guys have been dealing with, trying to chop this pathway. They've cut this pathway right through the middle of eight feet high plants here, six foot high stingers, and created this bay area with a bivvy if you want to overnight there. Old seat they found. This is Guy's Cliff House. There's a million small fish down there. I can't imagine there's not a pike in this pool somewhere. I would so like to catch something of consequential size. My, my, my feeling is just down the back of this. And we'll see. Ah, oh, my bait's come off. Oh, happy days. All the way back to catch another bait. So much of my secret method of the elastic band. But there you go, people. Look at that up there. That is pretty impressive. 
We were talking, one day it's going to come down. I wonder if it would be somebody standing in this, in his exact, his exact swim, and as he comes down, the window goes straight across you and you're absolutely unscathed. And why would you build it right on the river there? I don't understand that for floods. Here's another area that the guys have cleared. As you can see, heck of a lot of work. We're gonna have a throw through there. Nice bit of stream of weed there. Got that sort of barbel look in the evening about it. There's a shape over there. I don't know if that's a pike or not. I think that's behind it. And up there is a the guy's cliff restaurant. And the Whirlpool swim is up there to the right. I'm going to have a throw down here. You'd think there'd be a fish around the back of these lilies. There should be. With my name on it. Who knows? No shortage of small fish here. Anybody wants to go with a stick float? Two or three maggots? I've just seen a carp about eight pounds. A river common. Really fat. It came in close. And that's the largest fish I've seen to date. I put some balls of ground weight in now. Whether we'll come back on them tonight, I don't know. Obviously, you hook a river carp, wild one like in here, is going to go much more than a still water one. I'm just amazed I'm not getting mullered by pike, even jacks. So you've got lilies here, look, broken, broken ground with lilies. Lilies over the back, very, very scenic. Big smooth area over there. And it's so clear, I've got polarising glasses and I would see any fish following there. If I turned a fish over, what they call turning a fish over so he flashed, that you could see easily my bait three feet away. And indeed, if there was anything rocketing out from those lilies, I'm pretty sure I would see it in that shadow line. <clears throat> My god, it's hot. Not the best time for fishing. I could obviously sit up there in the shade and catch as many roaches as I want. Well, I've been catching plenty of roach. I came up to see Alex who's fishing in the weir pool. I think he said he had a small pike where I had to go in and get it in the weir because it was snagged. This is the upstream stretch which hasn't even been discovered more than one swim and there's a gentleman up there catching these, loads of these. It looks so pike and perchy, it's ridiculous. But my God, it is. If I walk 50 paces there, other than hearing the, the traffic, you could get lost. Tomorrow, I think, I'll probably stay where I am and just do the roach. I've seen a carp there. I don't know, I don't know this big, six, eight pounds. So a proper wild river carp. And he's probably come up and just snuff all around my ground bait that I dropped him where I was gonna film. So, he's got four big balls of ground bait. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm gonna set up a bolt rig for him and leave it out there tonight. I think I haven't got any carp. I've got pike gear, obviously. That will do the same job, 15 pound line. Bolt rig, I might, might get lucky. Some worms as well, look at this. <laughs> it's, it's like kids fishing, except I'm already stung with the stingers. So, a lot of potential. Well, look at all the wall that's here. So there's obviously a substantial amount of water comes down for the wall to be built this high. The restaurant, Saxon Mill restaurant, looks very nice. A lot of people go there. I should think good food. And they've got beers there as well, and that's a cold beer might be luring me tonight. Whew. So hot. And there's a public footpath that goes here. Oh, he's got a perch there. Nice big weir sill here going down. Lovely spot. Look what a place to have a meal and a drink. Well, all the bait I've put down there is gone. 
small fish I imagine, I don't see any big shapes drifting across it. And the carp I saw was down here. Hmm. He was down under there somewhere. Right under here. I don't see him there now. Well, I guess it's back to the roach. Let's give him a bit of a feed up. I'm gonna make one really hard ball. I'm playing hard ball now, guys. Down there. There's so many minnows, they're just going to polish this all off. Shame I didn't bring a uh, load of hard baits. Huh? That's deeper than you think there. I'm seeing some bigger shapes down here, people. Are they big roach? Look, this is the roach I'm catching, right? The trouble is there's so many down there. Oh, I've got a feeling there's some big fish went through some decent sized roach then. Hmm. Definitely, definitely saw some big fish. Yeah, there's a bigger fish, two bigger fish on the inside. The trouble is the small fish are tugging away at it so much the big fish can't get to see the bait. I wonder if a piece of bread flake might do it. Well, I've made it way downstream. God, you can hardly get through them. I'm a stinking sweating heap. Beer cans down there, so if somebody comes in, they're probably swimming, I guess. That's the only swim I could see. Is steps down over there, so it's probably a commercial area. <clears throat> if I lose this bait, I've got none. Only a couple of lures I brought with me. I need to get very, very lucky, very soon. Cannot believe there's not more pike in there. <clears throat> no shortage of small fish, but even they seem in pockets. Very pikey looking over there. At least down the side overhangs. I can only work away and just hope. It's into the sun, guys. I've come through this long, sweating, heaving, oh, sailor, a sweating sailor. If there's not a pike in here, I'm packing up, I'm going back and I'm throwing a boy in the river and going to sleep for two days. They're yeah, absolutely, look at that mat of rubbish and weed being held up there. Honestly, it just screams of a slamming take from pike. A pike. Deep, dark and ominous. There's even the pike helicopter going over the top. From a wild, unkempt area, I don't understand how this place is not heaving with pike. You can even try down there. insects. Weird, very very weird. Real true wild fishing but my god it's a bit too wild. Awful lot of stingers. Should be fish under there. Goodness me. Probably never seen a lure for years looking by the way it's overgrown here. Or bait. Shouldn't even need bait here to be honest. You've got weeds, lilies, anywhere along that edge across that corner. I'll give up, I think I'll give up. All that, oh, wait, you can, is that weed? Could have been weed. 
No, that's a pickup. I thought I did say that. I did say it. This it could be the only chance of the day. I feel it might be a fish. I'm not 100% sure. You can see the line here. Looks like it hasn't been used since last year. Yeah, there's something going that way. Let's check the drag. I think I'm going to wind down and see if there's anything there, guys. And he's dropped it. Well, well, that has to be some kind of small pike. A tiny jack, a tiny jack. In the weed, probably going to ping off. A tiny jack. But it's a fish, maybe that's what I lost earlier on. Well, I'll set up for anything, people. Ow, Jesus, I nearly went in there. Oh, come on. Come to Uncle Graham. Save the blank, yes, he's in. Well, well. Here he comes. There he is, folks. Not a monstrous fish, but I tell you what, I'm grateful to get it. Wow, a nice olive colours on it too. He's looking at that opaque sort of eye he's got there. Save the blank then for that. He's gone. Whew. That was an unbelievably hard, pretty well, three quarter day session. No, half of that I suppose it didn't come up till 12 o'clock. Now all I've got left is lure. Oh, sweating, it's running off me. See my arm here. All I've got in my, because that's my bait box, not a lure box, single treble, bubs on only one, and it's a rubbery thingy which is going to get thrown in. It's one of those lures. If you lose it, you lose it. I think somebody gave me this one. It's probably just as well. The thing is with lures, you can fish them and cover the water a little bit quicker. Also with snaggy, our downside is more chances of losing it. So when I get close to the margins, I speed up the retrieve. The benefit is, wow, that was close. I can actually, uh, hopefully if a fish grabs it, I've got a good chance of that hook taking hold. Rather than with bait, that might be a small pike and a bigger bait, which that was, waiting for him to turn it. Because I was only on a VV single. So the hook is right up the front of the bait. I'm feeling a perch over there. I'm also feeling this lure getting snagged and lost. push through here look there's a whole tree falling down in front of me so it doesn't get any more jungly than this it's like the Amazon it really is pocket casting we call this <clears throat> can be very good can be extremely hazardous with lures weedless lures are pretty handy in situations like this I'm not a lover of weedless lures get more strikes and hookups in my opinion and some of them have those awful big hook, double hooks which don't seem to set properly but you never know in these nooks and crannies there could be anything just glad it's not somewhere like Malaya or Africa or the Congo so I'm sweating as though I'm in there could be alligators and mosquitoes and tetsy fly. Whoa, that was some dangerous cast, Graham. Underhanded, under the bush. It deserves a pound perch. But it ain't gonna get it. The idea was to come and get a jungle pike, albeit a small one, and that's been a success. Oh, dear me. Sweating. 
I've been about 10 minutes beating my way through this lot. I've discovered another swim. This I feel is going to be the last one. It's just too much effort in this heat. They might even be the swims that the club had 20 years ago. So much work those guys have got to do, it's unbelievable. I think the first thing would be, well, finding the bank, an investment in a strimmer. At least I haven't lost my mat. A few casts here, guys. Look, they're, they're, they're up here, they're, they're five foot six, six feet, these stingers. The bank, I just got a bad thing is right in front of me. Away we go. Always the excitement of the unknown when you cast into that totally unexposed area of water. Hasn't seen a lure for years. I know that by the amount I've pushed through here. You'd think it would be wild with fish teeming with them, but it's not. I've had this before many times. Oh, under normal circumstances, that deserves a fish. It's got instead a snag. Could be Good Night Vienna. Could you miss an old lure? That's a risk in these wild places. What else have I got I can lose? I've got all that walk back here. Whew. Man, I look forward to this evening in a cold beer. Hopefully it's still cold. Yeah, it's not my lure box. You see, it's all my hook stuff. It's not even a... Normally I chuck a spin or something, something in. Oh, I've got a good perch on, guys. Sorry. I had a good perch on. Ha! <laughs> it's just the way the day is, isn't it? Yeah, had a good perch on. See if he comes out. How this be? Nice perch. I've been getting bumps over the back there, so I wound really slow. Got a perch on. Switch the camera on. Time it takes me to switch the camera on. He decides to depart for the weeds and rushes. Oh, I think I got him out. I think I got him out. He's out. He's out. He's out. I'm going to take a huge gamble. What a beauty. Got his fin up for us. Sidewinder lure in his jaw. Happy days, all those stinging nettles. It was well worth it. Had about eight bangs in this swim as well. That's a beauty. Big perch. Wow. Well pleased. We've got a pike just taking this, guys. Is that a fish? That's a fish. That's a fish that took really soft. It's not a big fish. I just saw the... I just saw the bait disappear, I've got to be perfectly honest. I'm just coming down the margins before I pack up for the night session. He might spit the bait, but it is indeed. Oh no, he's not a bad fish. That's not a bad pike. Wowee. That was a bonus and a half. Dead roach, twitched in the margins, but hooked in the back of the head, so it did a different type of flash. I didn't actually see the pike take. Let's hope the camera's working. He's a jumper. Oh no, he's not that big. Listen. Oh, bloody hell he's going. For a small fish. Has he been eaten? You don't know what's in this river. Look at him go. That is bizarre. I'm on a 20 pound line here. This is a small pike, I can see it. Where's he get all that energy from? That's a spit the bait shape there. We might get lucky. He's in. Well, well, well. Let's put him on the mat, get him unhooked and show him to you people. They've got a pike just taking this, guys. Is that a fish? That's a fish. That's a fish that took really soft. It's not a big fish. I just saw the I just saw the bait disappear. I've got to be perfectly honest. I'm just coming down the margins before I pack up for the night session. He might spit the bait, 
but it is indeed. Oh no, he's not a bad fish. That's not a bad pike. Wowee. That was a bonus and a half. Dead roach, twitched in the margins, but hooked in the back of the head, so it did a different type of flash. I didn't actually see the pike take. Let's hope the camera's working. He's a jumper. Oh no, he's not that big. Listen. Oh, bloody hell he's going. For a small fish. Has he been eaten? You don't know what's in this river. Look at him go. That is bizarre. I'm on a 20 pound line here. This is a small pike, I can see it. Where's he get all that energy from? That's a spit the bait shape there. We might get lucky. He's in. Well, well, well. Let's put him on the mat, get him unhooked and show him to you people. Long time coming. Number two anyway. The setup's a bit bizarre people. A white lure rod with 15 pound line on the bait runner. Down there because I saw that carp come in here. I've got a single hard boilie. It is, um, oh, what was it now? It's my favourite one. I've got two left. One's in the water, so I've got one spare. Let's have a look at it. So you guys know, I know you like to know which one's which. I've done really well on these last couple of years. CC Moore. It's the 18 mil hard hook bait Pacific tuna. No, I don't sell them. But when they're washed out, I put them back in there. So you know I've got faith in them. Uh, spag bowl is on the cooker there. I put it on the lowest setting ever and it still, still gets naughty. I've that other pike, so now I'm on a load of roach, that big perch, two small pike, plus another two pike. The ground bait balls are down in there, so I've got the boilie anchored just off to the right in case he comes in during the night, that carp. And be sure to take off at speed. I've got the pike bait down here, stroke Xander strum come eel. And um, that's sort of in the middle where I've been baiting up on the line over there. Well, I've got a mess to sort out here before it gets dark. Just had a brew. Oh, it's so hot I can't tell you. <clears throat> it's nice to actually have a cup of tea. I'm gonna have a cook up in a minute. If I had my big umbrella, I don't think I need to put the bivy up. It is so hot. We just said they're probably gonna go below 20 degrees tonight. And I've got a can of beer which I'm saving. Now, I've seen that carp. I put some more ground bait in the bottom there. It's going to get eaten. I'm just looking myself there now. I'm just looking. I think I maybe put a bundle of lobworms or something down there that the little ones aren't going to eat too much. I've done so much of that exploring. I'm absolutely green cracking. My legs are aching. In and out those thistles and oh, I can't tell you all that. Five foot nettles. But worth it to get that perch it's probably never even been caught before and i was talking to the guys about how to get access to open up some of those swims there's so many swims down there i just got the feeling there's a big perch in this water got that feeling maybe drop shot in something like that or small lures mini lures mobile move swims move swims move swims tonight we're going to be using bivvies just here so i guess down there i'm going to put the bivy up and this one is a big one two three giant lobworms on a curved, which one was it? A grips. I'll show you what they are. I'm using these because they've got that little ridge, the barbless, but they've got little ridges, and I feel that help hold uh, live baits, maggots, and worms on. Curved shank size six, big enough to gaff them. And that's out the back for a, well, it's no good for Xander because I'm on six pound new mono straight through. It will be eel or the legendary barbel that are supposed to live in here. I have not used the lunch of meat. I will throw some stuff out later on there. I've got stuff in the cooler that's got to go. But the priority is, is grub, because I haven't eaten much all day. Oh, I'll tell you what I have got in the cooler. I'm trying to keep this cool. Oh, yes. One can of beer. I've got the milk in there for tomorrow. Might be a bit suspect to keep it zipped up. I'm going to put these. Wifey said these. You can eat these as a salad. All right, five bean salad in vinaigrette. I always thought it was vinaigrette. 
vinaigrette. So I'm going to drain off that. Now you can eat these beans raw, like this, mixed beans, or you can indeed put them in here. Graham, that spoon's hot. Mmm. Just eat, whack them down like that. Plenty of, uh, is it carbo, carbos? Carbohydrates, beans, what's a bean? Protein, I don't know. It's food, it all goes down by me, people. In fairness, these beans are really good, but why have you said bung them in with a spag bowl? Because they're all mixed. I'm virtually going to eat the whole tin anyway. Well, I'm going to eat the whole tin. And they'll heat up. There's going to be some sort of mush, that isn't that, eh? Well, the beans say I'm bubbling with a spag bowl. This is going to be a mixture. I think it's dishing up time. Well, that, people, is what can affectionately be known as a belly buster. Hopefully not in a sleeping bag at night. Oh, I'll tell you what I have done. While this cools down a bit, put it on my dining table. I've got this high to keep it out of the current with a worm on, right? It's on the buzzer, but I put it down here just to push in, hook like that. Right, so that should, should a rare rarity like a barbel crash that rod over it comes up there tight can you see that it comes up there will buckle over and sort of hold the hook in that's the theory well it's not a theory i use it for barbel up on the wire and hampshire even places like that when i'm fishing with it up high getting a bit of attention on my uh, treble lobworm there but it looks like it looks like small ones but what i have done Open a packet of these. Listen, you know me guys, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. They're called activated coarse pellets. Eight mils. I thought you had to soak them, they float. I don't even know if you do have to soak them. But they sink. And I have to say when I chuck them in, all the roach and small fish go completely loopy loop for them. So chucking them all in there purely because they sink down and I think the small fish can't actually you know well I suppose it can run off of them they can't eat them quite so easily but what I have done with that I've got a big boilie down there is this people don't do this so I've been putting balls of ground bait obviously down there I might as well show you if it gets too dark right so there's my boilie just on a bolt rig Slips free, you know, the lead slips slips free on the line. Safe rigs, that's what they call them, safe rigs. But, as I've been throwing balls of ground bait down there, this is the last of my ground bait before it gets dark, I'm going to squeeze a really hard ball around that. And just drop it down there, because I'm pretty sure that river carp's going to come poking around in there. And that toes down lays perfectly. Look, it's all a game, it's all fun. It's on a bait runner. And I put a little bob in there as well. In case, I can't, but they can hardly look. How can there be much of a drop, drop back bite because it's going to hit the bank, isn't it? But keep everybody happy. We get our washing up bottle top as per pike wise. Just put that on there. There we go. That can register a drop back bite should it come into the bank, up over the bank, and up there to the road. I'm not sure whether to recast that worm because he did have a couple of bangs. My sander rod here with the uh, single roach on is still out. Again, the pike I saw was down here. Too dark for me to see anything now. I'm tempted just to rob it out there and leave it, I think. I think that's what I do. And then I'll put the bivy up. Well, dark now, guys. It is about 10.15, 10.30. I 
I've had a few bites on the worm. Um, obviously not going to stay up all night. But it's chewed, it's all chewed up. So even if I stay up all night, what's the point? This small perch, I'm guessing, small fish, chew away at the lob worms, break them down, break them down, break them down, and they get a little segment about half an inch long. I don't feel that an eel is going to pick that up. You know, I need a whole bunch of uh, lob worms for an eel to pick it up. Probably going to wind that one in, leave it, and just fish with the pike stroke zander, really after a zander. I've got some of those isotopes, I don't know whether to put those on the line as well. But I just know they can see, Xander can see totally in the pitch black. My problem is, I've got the full moon, or a fullish moon coming up here in a few hours. So, shoot kill the fishing right off, I find that personally. And I've got the uh, ground bait, <laughs> barely a rod lift out, and a boilie over the top of that. One of the CC Moore boilies. Pacific Tuna, I think it is, that's one. It's normally a very good one. Listen, I might get lucky with the river car, might not, but anyway, I think it's time to reside in the bivvy. So, tough fishing, but I've come out with something anyway at the moment. Well, Alex and a couple of other guys are in a bivvy in the sort of next room to me. Um, I guess they've got sander baits out as well, dead baits. Who knows what's going to come along? And that's the secret of this type of fishery: is you knew, you know, you just don't know. You don't know what's out there. All very quiet at the moment, other than the traffic. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not bothered with sleeping bag or pillow. It's so hot tonight. Don't think you need either. If I can get hour or so, a couple of three hours sleep would be brilliant. Obviously I'd like to be woken up by a fish, but that's down to the fish, isn't it? Failing that, I should be there for first thing in the morning. I'll set up for a few hours sleep. Or a giant eel waking me up. I'm on something on the worms, guys. I'd say it's got to be an eel myself. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> this could be a really good eel. Take that camera for it now. Where's that now? Oh, that could be a big eel. <laughs> it's a really big eel. There's a branch, but there's also an eel on the end of it, covered in mud. I do show you. There's some nice eels in here, people. Look at that one. Bunch of lobworms. I was just laying there thinking, there's more than one beat there. That could be a big eel. Not a monster, but those worms have worked. Of course, getting them unhooked is something else. Not as big as the one I thought I had. I thought it was like five feet long. Well, it's 4.25 in the morning. 
One of the, uh, the boiler roots has been beeping on and off. I don't know if it's small roots or whether it's just fish bumping up against the line. So I've wound the bobbin up tight now, so hopefully I'll stop that. So it's not a cloud in the sky, but I got cold last night. Still, eels woke me up. Well, that's interesting, look at this. <laughs> what, we've chunked all that out like that? And eaten the entire head off and missed the hook? I would think. I don't think that's Xander, I think that's eels. Anyway, I've got to lob it down and try and catch a fresh bait now. Something might pick it up down there. Certainly, pretty impressive building up there. I'm down here like first thing in the morning, so the light's hitting all the brickwork and you can see the sort of cliff effect that they must have built it on at the base here. Maybe that's why it's called Guy's Cliff, because that sort of base looks like it's been built on a cliff there. I'm just throwing a bait around, as you do. Seeing if there is a suicidal pike around. It appears not. I thought it might be different with the lights different in the morning. You can see it's lighting up different areas of the river. But it's that clear that they can definitely see it. And here you can see, well, just a really good bivy area for if you did want it overnight. And what an impressive setting up there. You're fishing here at night, baits out for who knows what. Xander, eels, pike, barbel. It's all there. It was in my dreams last night. Only the eels showed up though. I'm oh, just trying to salvage guys, just a a pike or a perch. That's all I'm looking for, a pike or a perch. All my ground bait's gone. Let's get that around that edge of that bush. Just there, so it could be a fish under that. You can actually see the jungle of this, uh, I think it's a Himalayan balsam. Invasive species, I believe, somebody will doubtless tell us. Now I'm going to have to hop this over there. over the top there. It's going to be worth a throw down the outside. I can't, I can't believe there's not a pike in there. Well, the car's all packed away. I've just got one rod, one bait, a few lures in my camera bag, net, way, unhooking mat, and that's it. I've come upstream, so into Jungleville. Uh, the Saxon Mill restaurant's there, so this is the upstream section. <clears throat> Guy was fishing here yesterday, lots of small fish, small roach, lovely stick float fishing, lovely. You can sit there and pound fish all day long. He tells me this is the last swim at the moment they've cleared. I'd just like to, look, it opens out up there but they've got to clear through all these nettles. I've shown you how big the nettles are. Look, here's there's the top there's my top of my head is here, look. Top of my head is there. So seven feet tall those nettles. And at this time of year, ready to sting you. So I'm gonna have a few throws here with the bait and lure, give it an hour and just see what comes up. It is luckily in the shade here. It just looks so Predator, ridden, pike, perch. Obviously unlikely to get anything but a humongous perch on this uh, dead bait. And maybe I might have to have a through few. The trouble, with, look, what I'm gonna tell you is this. Very, very effective is twitching dead baits like I'm doing now. 
providing you're fishing in an area where you're fairly confident there's going to be a pike. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time doing this and not covering much ground. Whereas a lure is going to, you know, work through there faster and you'll cover more ground. You might, might bump into a pike, but generally I find if you've got features, there's lilies here, there's sunken trees over there, great big su sunken branch over there. Yes, I'm in it. I might have to go to lures, guys. He's gone. I think I've got it all back, I'm not sure. I did, just lost my bait. Overhangs up there. Then they're features where pike should be. And there's so many small fish in here. I mean, I cannot believe it's not absolutely rotten with pike. But it appears not. I've got pretty well where I wanted to get here, as you can see. Nice open area, plenty of features, twitching baits, nothing. I may go down and just have 10 minutes on that weir if there's nobody in there and give it a go because it could be the oxygen's there and there might be a fish moving and then it's home. But I've enjoyed my little session here somewhere different. Look, it's always good to have different fisheries to go to and it just was a sort of experimental one for me. The guys have only just taken it over, what, three months ago? I mean, Look through there, it is a jungle. How many swims are undiscovered? Anyway, that's not doing me any good with fish. If I can't get to them, I can't catch them. Well, I've actually managed to push through because there's a big wall here. Look, if I can, look, big slab wall here. I'm assuming, can't be the whole river, it's the uh, approach to what was the mill back in the day when they used the mill for grinding flour and stuff and they wanted to make sure, let's get that well over there. So, I'm between two trees. It is the pikiest pike fishing spot I think I've fished for a long time. And fortunately, there are no residents at home. I might just push on a little bit farther. There's no weed or anything obviously growing under here because of the shade, but you'd think low water conditions like this, you'd think something will follow me in and just boil behind the bait, but it's nothing. Very, very peculiar. Few underhand accelerated cars to get it out there. Kingfish are just gone through there. Something sort of a disappointing because I haven't had the hits, but be exciting. Every every little corner you go to, you think, "Oh, this is a spot. This is a spot. This is a spot." But then, very often, you find with fisheries. Lakes as, lakes as well, can be lakes as well. Just where you think is the best spot, which looks as the best spot, it's not. That's where you need local knowledge. I think I've reached, I would turn out the end of the line. I'm gonna turn around somehow and get back out. Good bit of exploratory fishing. You can tell the power this river's had. There's massive slabs of concrete here that have been ripped up, I imagine, by floods and bent backwards. It's so pleasant. I don't almost want to go and fish a weir pool. Well, I've got to have a dozen casts here at least. It's so perch looking. I mean, I can, I can almost feel them drop shotting. I'll follow the wall back and hopefully I'll reach the, uh, the restaurant. This might give you guys an idea, a different perspective of what I'm, what I'm going through to try and get you people a feel. Look, ooh, <laughs> sense of humour at 70, eh? Gotta love it. This is where you don't want to meet your two worst female enemies. Deadly Nightshade and the worst one, Poison Ivy. Ooh. And have the common sense to wear long trousers. Yes, sensible Graham. And then wear a short sleeve polo shirt. Please, somebody send me some batteries for the brain. Where the hell is a way out? I'm only going by the the, the buzzing of the uh, cold store from the restaurant. Is this where I came? Yes. I would recognise that tree root anywhere. Oh. 
good bit of exploring. Look, see, it's all concrete, huge concrete. Are these sluices? Or have they been cut through? Because this would overspill there and go into the back over there. Anyway, a couple of throws in the weir pool and I'm done. Well, I've come to the weir pool. Right behind me there's 20 kids jumping in the water. Can you blame them? It's hot. I could almost jump in that myself. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you guys in the next episode.